Welcome to part four of the Blue Collar Coder in-depth look at arrays. And in this one, we're going to take a look at map and some other related methods. In the last one, we took a look at how to get a slice out of an array or to find a subset of an array. In this one, we're going to take a look at how to mutate an array with map. Let's jump right into it. Okay, let's start off with a list of numbers as we usually do. And we want to multiply each one of these by 10 and put those into a new array. So we'll say const numbers times 10. Now we use numbers and then map. And what map does is take a function and apply it to every value in an array. And then whatever comes out of the map is the new value for that item. So for example, the first parameter is the value and we're just gonna take that value and multiply it by 10. Let's take a look and see what we get. And we get a copy of the original numbers array with all of the items multiplied by 10. But of course, you actually don't need to maintain the same data type coming out of the map. And so let's just say that now we want to create a array of objects where they've got a key called value that has that numbers times 10. So let's do this again. I'll copy and paste this. And we'll say that we want objects coming out of this. And instead of value times 10, we're going to return an object. So we do that using parentheses and then the curly braces to open an object for us. And then we'll say value is the key and it's V times 10. So let's see what that comes up with. So there you go. You got an array of objects now as opposed to an array of primitives. So building on what we learned in the last video, Let's combine filter and map together. So let's create an array that has some negative numbers in it. And what we want is we want the positive numbers multiplied by 10. So we'll do first the filter. So we'll first do a filter and then we'll do a map. So positive by 10. And so let's start off with a filter. So numbers with negatives, filter. And then we want to take that value and make sure that that value is greater than zero. And then we'll apply the map. So from that, we'll then take the value and then multiply it by 10. And let's take a look at what we get. And we get 200 and 300 because our only positive values in here are 20 and 30. And so we've filtered to just that and then mapped that filter to get us 200 and 300, just like that. So that's an example of chaining. You're chaining the output of filter into map and that gives you your complete results. So I think you can go a little bit too far when it comes to chaining. I would say my personal take is around five or six might be too many, but something like this I think is fine. Okay, let's talk about how to map over objects. So let's create a new array of people. So in this case, we've got a first name, a last name and an address. So Jane Smith lives in Oakland. Sally Joe lives in Foster City. So let's create an array of objects where we've got a full name for each person. So that's going to just be concatenating the first and last name together. So we'll say full names. And then we'll take people and we'll map that. And we'll take that person object. And what we're going to do is return a new object where we destructure all of that person into that object. Now let's take a look and see what we get so far. So we get a copy of the original object. Now we can go and add a new key to it. So I'll make full name and then I'll take a template string and do p.first and p.last. And now let's take a look at full names and we've got this new full name value in there that has the full name between those things. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So now let's mutate this a little bit. So I'm going to go take this full names and I'm going to look at the zeroth item. So that would be Jane Smith. And I'm going to change her first name to Penny. And I'm going to take a look at full names again. And we can see that now we're Penny Smith, but that full name hasn't changed. It's not a dynamic binding like that. It was run when her name was Jane and it would need to be run again to catch that update. But let's also change her address. So I'll go address.city and I'm gonna change that to San Jose. Turns out she knows the way to San Jose. Okay, so now she's in San Jose, but 
let's go take a look at the original people array again. And we get an interesting but confusing result here. So Jane Smith is still in the original array, but now address is pointing to San Jose, where it was originally Oakland. What the heck is going on here? Let's go take a look in a diagramming tool. All right, well, we started off with an array with two references to objects. The first one was a, re a reference to the Jane object, which in turn had a reference to the address object. Same thing with Sally, who had a reference to her Foster City address object. So even inside objects, objects within objects are also references. So what happens when we copied it? Well, we created a new array, we changed the first name to Penny here, and we did a shallow copy. So when we did the original dot dot dot, we got a shallow copy, so all of the strings and booleans and numbers copied, but any object was copied as a reference. And so that's why the address was mutated, but the values in the original first order copy of that object were not mutated. So crazy, right? So that's why you have Jane here and you've got Penny here. <clears throat> These are the things you need to think about when you're working with JavaScript. So let's jump back into the code. So in the past, I've talked about Lodash's clone deep, which is an excellent utility to do a deep clone of an object or an array. I'm gonna do a cheaper version here. I'm gonna call this one cheap clone. It's gonna take an object. And you know what it's gonna do? It's going to JSON stringify that, turn it into a string, and then it's gonna wrap that in a JSON parse to parse that string. No, I just think I'm gonna barf. And what will that do? Yes, it will create a clone of that object. Now there are some caveats. It's a little slower than clone deep. Interestingly, I mean, both of these are native methods. I'm not sure why exactly why that's the case. And it also doesn't handle things like dates. So there are some issues with this, but if you need it in a pinch, this is actually a decent way to go. So now we'll do cheap clone on here and we'll just clone those values. And now we can see back here that this original value is maintained, that we're still in Oakland, just like before with Jane Smith, but the full names now has Penny Smith in San Jose. So now we actually have two entirely different pieces of data there. All right, let's continue on and take a look at array from. So let's have some numbers here. And there's a nice method on array itself called array from that can take data that's in multiple different formats, for example, a node list, if you're inside of a DOM environment, or a set, and you can turn it back into an array. So let's try that out. Let's do array.from and give it numbers. And that's just going to give us a copy of that number. So the output of array from is a copy of the original numbers, again, a shallow copy. But people didn't know necessarily that there's actually map built into this as well. So for example, if I wanted to multiply everything by 10, I could simply say V is V times 10, just like before. And now there is a multiply by 10 version of this array. So there's a little bit of a cute thing in there. There's a map inside of array from, some people didn't know that, so there you go. Now let's talk about a related method, flat because flat itself also has a flat map variant. So let's start off with numbers again, but in this case, it's an array of arrays of numbers. So we've got 10, 20, 30 in one array, subarray in 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 in subarrays. How do we get that all onto one level? How do we get this back into one array and get rid of that nesting? Well, you can use flat. And flat gives you 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way through 90, all in one array. But what if it's really pathologic? What if you've got arrays within arrays within arrays? So in this case, we've got an array that has within it arrays, within, within, deep like that. That's just, is this craziness, right? So look at that, that's nuts. All right, well, let's do flat on that and see what we get. Well, we get one level of that array peeled off. So let's say we put in two there. Now we get two levels of that array peeled off and Let's do infinity here. 
And now we get 10, 20, 30, 40, and we get an infinite level of flatness. Awesome. All right, so let's take a look at flat map. So again, we'll start off with a list of values. And let's start off with a map where we're going to take that value and the index, and we're going to return out of here an array with the value and the index. And so what we get from that is we get a nested set of arrays. So we get 10 with 0, 20 with 1, 30 with 2, 40 with 3, and so on and so forth. Now, what if we want that to be flattened? What if we want all one array where it's 10, 0, 20, 1, so on and so forth? Well, you can use the flat map. And that will give you 10, 0, 20. And that is exactly the equivalent of calling flat on here and actually flat with a depth of 1. So you don't even get to define the depth. You have to get it at 1. But if this is what you need to do, then this is actually a decent way to do that. All right, so to finish up, let's take a look at the concat method. I'm going to start with two arrays here. And I'm going to do first, which is an array with 10 and 20, and then concat onto that, second. And that's going to give us a new array that has 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, just like that. Now you can, again, you can chain these out. So for example, I can do map, give it v times 10. And we get 100, 200, 300, so on and so forth. It's pretty nice. But there's also a way to do this using destructuring, like we've used in the past. So let's create a new array. We'll do first and second. And now we have a new array that has exactly the same thing as that concat. And I actually think it reads better. And as it turns out, it's actually more performant. And then we can also do a map on that. Now let's save that. And then we can get array that has 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Awesome. All right, well, let's do a bit of a review. So we started off doing some very simple mapping from a value to another value. Then we turned a value into an object. Then we chained together filter and map. Then we looked at how to map over people, as well as how to clone in a very cheap way. We looked at how to use the array from method and also use its map functionality. We looked at how to do flat and flatten an array, as well as do a map and then a flat, which is counterintuitively called flat map, but it's, which in reality is actually a map and then a flat. And then finally, we looked at concat and how to join arrays together using destructure. All right, well, I hope this helps you learn a lot more about map because it is a critical function in your ES6 toolkit. This is one of the ones that I really think you should memorize. So if you have any questions about it, be sure to put those in the comments section down below or jump on my Discord server and we can talk about it there. Of course, in the meantime, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.